Hello team players. Before I get started with this video, I want to thank every single viewer that has watched my videos over the past three years, especially those of you that hit that subscribe button. It's thanks to you guys that we now have a community of over a thousand people on this channel, which is a huge deal. But this is just the beginning. You guys can definitely expect a lot more great content from me as time goes on, like this video. I know some of you guys have probably seen my top 10 spells videos from earlier, but with the remaster out, I figured now's the time to redo those. We've got some new spells, we've got some old spells in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 divine spells in Pathfinder 2e. Keep in mind, I'm doing these spells in order of spell rank, not necessarily by power. I'm going to start with one of my favorite cantrips, Forbidding War. Even with the remaster, Forbidding War is pretty much the same as it's always been. But I am going to go over it in this video very quickly, just for those viewers that don't know what it does. When you cast this spell, you choose one ally and one enemy, both of which must be within 30 feet of you. The targeted ally receives a plus one status bonus to their armor class and saving throws against everything the targeted enemy can do to them. This spell can be sustained for up to one minute. While this spell isn't great if you're facing a lot of enemies, it is fantastic for boss fights. It's even also available on the occult list, but I'll cover a different spell when I get to that list. For my next entry, I've got two spells for you since they do the exact opposite of one another. I am, of course, talking about Bane and Bless. Both of these spells were buffed in the remaster. Bane gives a penalty to attack rolls to any enemies that are in its area, but it no longer starts as a 5-foot emanation. No, instead, it starts as a 10-foot emanation. And you can still increase its area every turn, but now it increases by 10 feet every time you sustain it. The same is true of Bless, except for a couple of things. First, it starts off as a 15-foot emanation, and of course, it gives a plus one bonus to your allies' attack rolls. Overall, increasing the area is a big deal. With the original versions of Bane and Bless, it took way too long to affect who you wanted to affect unless they were right next to you. Now it is much easier. For our second level spell for this video, again, I've got two spells for you, since they basically do the same thing but for different conditions. Sure Footing allows you to counteract conditions such as Clumsy, Grabbed, or Paralyzed. If you heighten the spell to higher levels, you can also attempt to counteract things like Restrained, Immobilized, Petrified, and even Stunned. Sound Body does the same thing, but for conditions such as Sickened, Blinded, Dazzled, Deafened, and even Enfeebled. And if you heighten the spell, you can even get rid of the Drained condition. These were all separate spells before. So if you wanted to attempt to counteract these conditions, you really needed to prepare all of them, because you had no way of knowing what you were going to run into. But now you no longer need to do that and just have these two spells available, meaning Divine Casters can be much more versatile with their spells now. And these are also available on the Occult and Primal lists, meaning even Bards can attempt to remove diseases if they are causing one of the conditions I mentioned earlier, which is kind of a big deal. Next up, we've got the Heroism spell. Again, it works the same as it always has. Plus one status bonus to pretty much every d20 roll there is. Except for flat checks, of course. But this one is pretty much just guidance on steroids, and it lasts for 10 minutes. Cast this right before a big fight, and you'll have an easier time. And if you need a bigger bonus, you can always heighten it to higher levels or cast something else. It won't stack, but you will get the higher bonus. 
For our fourth level spell, I've gone with Unfettered Movement. This is the new name for Freedom of Movement. Essentially, the target ignores any circumstance penalty to their speed, and if they would attempt to escape from an effect, they automatically succeed unless the effect is magical and of a higher level than unfettered movement. This one is great for when you're facing a bunch of enemies who want to slow down, like, say, the Barbarian or the Fighter. Or for when your other spellcaster gets grabbed. It lasts for 10 minutes, too. So you could cast this on three different people. It would just take all of your fourth level spell slots, which may or may not be worth it. But overall, if you can get scrolls of this, all the better. Then, of course, you wouldn't have to use your spell slots. Which, of course, is where a crafting-type character would come in. Although, you may have to help them by supplying the casting of the spell. For my next spell on this list, I want to talk about Spiritual Guardian. The first change to this is that it no longer requires you to have a deity, which is honestly kind of a big buff. It means any divine caster can take this, even if they don't have a deity. Although, if you do have a deity, it takes the form of one of your deity's servitors. Another big change is that if you sanctify this spell, the guardian's attacks are sanctified as well. So you can essentially make the guardian's attacks holy or unholy if you have that trait. Creatures can move through the guardian's space, but not in their movement in it. The Guardian can also flank with you and your allies. It otherwise doesn't function as a creature, except that it has 50 hit points that it can't regain, and can only lose while protecting a creature. When you cast the spell, and each time you sustain it, you can have the Guardian move up to 120 feet and either attack or defend a creature. It wields a ghostly version of any weapon you're wearing or wielding. If you choose for the Guardian to attack, then it uses your spell attack roll to determine accuracy. It deals the same type of damage as the weapon you chose for it to wield, but it can do spirit damage if that would be more detrimental to the foe. This attack does use your multiple attack penalty. And of course, you can instead have it protect a certain ally. If the ally would take damage while the Guardian is adjacent to it, the Guardian takes the first 10 points of damage. This lasts until you command the Guardian to do something else, or the Guardian is destroyed. Both of these effects are really good for teamwork. Since you can make the Guardian's attacks holy or unholy, it can proc the weaknesses of certain creatures. In addition, since allies can flank with the Guardian even if it's not attacking, it's a great way to get that flat-footed condition as a spellcaster. Also, this thing is essentially a protector tree that can move, which is very cool as well. Which of these effects you use depends on the situation. But overall, great spell. Definitely consider picking this one up if you're a divine caster. Next up is Dominate. Yes, this spell has been added to the divine list, which is kind of a big deal. With this spell, you attempt to force an enemy to obey you. They do, of course, get a will save against this effect. However, even if they succeed on their saving throw, you still get stunned one as they try to fight off your commands. On a failure, it gains the control of condition, but receives a new save at the end of each of its turns to end the effect. The critical failure effect means they gain the control of condition, but only gain a save if you command them to do something that is against their nature, such as attacking their allies. This does have the incapacitation trait, however, even getting rid of one action on an enemy's turn is a huge deal. This is why the slow spell is so good. And don't worry, I'm going to cover that in a different video. Of course, there is definitely a reason why this spell has the incapacitation trait. Because you can just dominate them and then have them just sit there and take them out of the fight completely. Especially if they crit fail. Next up we have Energy Agus. With this spell, you can touch one creature, and until your next daily preparations, 
you can give them resistance 5 to pretty much all elements. That's acid, cold, electricity, fire, force, sonic, vitality, and void damage. This is a fantastic one to cast at the beginning of the day. Especially if you know that you're going up against enemies that can do those types of damage. But remember, you only get one ally per casting of this spell. Which means only three allies get this resistance. And that's if you use all of your spell slots at 7th level. So think about whether you want to cast Resist Energy or this. Because Resist Energy can hit multiple allies, but it's less versatile. For the level 8 spell that I'm going to cover for this video, I'm going to cover Canticle of Everlasting Grief. One creature within 120 feet takes 10d6 mental damage with a will save. It is essentially a basic save with a few extra effects. On a success, they are also frightened 1 and cannot benefit from circumstance or status bonuses for one round. On a failure, they're frightened 3 and can't benefit from circumstance or status penalties for one week. On a critical failure, the target is frightened 4, is cursed for an unlimited duration, and as long as it is cursed, all of its allies within 15 feet of it are also cursed. Even if you just take into account the frightened condition. The fact that this spell can inflict Frightened 4 without the incapacitation trait is huge. Remember that Frightened is a minus to everything. And even on a regular failure, minus 3 is kind of a huge deal. The no circumstance or status bonuses part of this spell really isn't going to come up too often. But this is a good way to make sure that minions can't buff the boss. And the last spell I have for you guys is Foresight. When you cast Foresight, for the next hour, the target, which can be any willing creature, including yourself, gains a plus two status bonus to initiative rolls and can't be off guard against undetected creatures or by being flanked. In addition, the target gains a reaction that basically gives them advantage on any roll against any hostile effects, or can give an enemy disadvantage on a roll against the targets. So essentially, we can make an ally roll twice and use the higher results, or have an enemy roll twice and use the lower results. Either way, the target must decide each time which effect to use. But both effects are amazing. And this spell lasts for one hour. Meaning, you can get a huge amount of work out of this reaction. Especially if you've got multiple encounters during that hour. But again, only works on one ally. So make sure you're careful about who you use this on. And that's the list. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. And subscribe to the channel for more Pathfinder 2e teamwork content. And again, thank you guys so much for being awesome viewers. If you guys are interested in teamwork tricks for all spellcasters, you can check out this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, teamwork is vital. It helps us solve problems.